We're in an orphanage that has really been devastated by the earthquake. We're going to set up camp, give them some supplies that they definitely are in need of. Oh, wow, there's a lot of kids in here. We're very honored to have the presence of the doctors here with us. It's very difficult to get support out in these regions, and we're just very proud to have their assistance with us today. I was speaking to the director of this orphanage, and she was saying that the problem isn't getting doctors to come here, it's getting supplies. If she doesn't have supplies, then the doctors say they won't come. All right, so you see here, this is one of the tents that we're leaving for, uh, for the orphanage. We've got these ones also, uh, because we're leaving a lot of medical supplies here, and the rains are coming, and the supplies don't do any good if they get wet. So we need to protect the supplies so the kids can be helped. We're just basically going to set up a little office here and start seeing kids. There's kids just, they've been coming in yeah. all day. I kind of took a quick survey of all the kids because if any kids are really sick, needing, needing an IV, we probably want to get that started sooner. Most of the kids have colds, flus, diarrhea, things like that, but uh, we're going we're gonna to check it out. You don't want to eat. Don't want to eat. She doesn't want to eat. Okay, so no appetite. Okay. So fever, no appetite. Hi. Hey there. Can you go like this? Look at that guy. So does your tummy hurt anywhere? Can you show me? Where? A little bit. Sometimes she feels something is biting. Into she feels something biting. Yeah. Okay. Biting into Is his belly. Into his belly. We have a system now. We are going on our 17th patient already, and we're starting to get a system of triage here. And we're also setting up tents for the patients who need more. So let's say he has a cleft palate and he needs surgery, and mom's never been able to find a specialist to do this for him. So I know Dr. Orton and some of his colleagues are coming down to do this sort of thing, so maybe we can get plug him plugged in to that program. As you can see, word's gotten around in the community that we're here and that we brought supplies, we brought diapers and medications and everything. And so there's huge lines for diapers and moms are all lined up and we're going to give them all out. And we've been using a generator here while we've been here. And I know you guys could use it a lot more than we are. We can. So we're going to give this to you. Anything you need to make electricity for, this will do it. Families just started coming in by the droves. We, I, I think I lost count after a few hundred. And this is just a small area. I mean, there's, there's hundreds of thousands of people that need the care like this, out in the outskirts, away from the city. This is Matt, he's an EMT. We actually met up with him just yesterday and he's been here a week and he kind of helped us get hooked into this orphanage. He's gonna stay here a while and help in follow-up care. But I was noticing that, you know one thing I didn't see today? Hmm. Browns, tears. It seems like everybody is smiling and laughing and, and, and you see that a lot here. I mean, that's exactly what I was thinking, how resilient yeah. these Haitian families are. I mean, these kids are laughing and playing games and yeah. you know they seem to be really still enjoying life and that's a great attitude to be having you know, you know? my gosh yeah. there's just still a lot of work that needs to be done here sure. but you're right so well, the kids really are smiling amazing attitudes yeah.